ክርስቲያን ተማሪዎች እንዲሁም ወላጆች ሰላምታይ በእያላችሁበት ይدرسአችሁ አኔ መምህር ተፈራ ጥበቡ ባላለኝ በአዲስ ከተማ ሁለተኛ ደረጃ ትምህርት ቤት የፊዚክስ መምህር ነኝ እንግዲህ ዓለም አቀፋዊ በሆነ ችግር ምክንያት ሁላችንም በቤት ውስጥ ሆነን እየሰራን እንደሆነ ይገኛል ይታወቃል እናንተም ተማሪዎች እንግዲህ በቤታችሁ ቁጭ ብላችሁ ያነበባችሁ እንደሆነ እንጠብቃለን ስለዚህ መዘናጋት አይተበቀባችሁም እየሰራችሁ ያነበባችሁ መቆየት ይኖርባችኋል so lazari makarbilachu ya 11 denya kifil unit 5 work energy and power yemilon concept yonal malatnu bezi meseret weda wannaw timirt nidallen melkam qoyita ndiyon dilachu menyal so today we are trying to discuss about unit 5 concept which is work energy and power of grid 11 unit 5 you need 5 work energy energy and power so what is the objective or competency of this unit well after the end of the lesson we are able to differentiate between work energy and power we are able to distinguish between work and force we are able to correlate between work and change of energy or so called known as work energy theorem as well we are able to uh, solve some uh, work problems therefore let's start with the lesson students let me ask you a question what is work what is work what i mean is mechanical work there are some kind of works like intellectual work or uh, any other forms of work but here we are trying to deal only about mechanical work so work can be defined as what work in physics can be defined as the dot product of force and displacement it is the dot product of force and displacement students i hope you already learn about the dot product and cross product of two vectors in unit 2 under the concept of vector therefore when two vectors are added the result is vector the difference of two vectors also is vector but the product of two vectors might result in a scalar or a vector depending on the type of the product for example the dot product of two vectors will give us scalar whereas the cross product of two vectors gives us vector therefore in this case work is a product of two vectors what are those two vectors force and displacement so symbolically we can represent work as work is equivalent or equals to mathematically expressed as force which is a vector quantity dot with s where f is force and s is displacement when we try to determine the magnitude the magnitude of force the magnitude of displacement times the cosine of theta where theta is the angle between the force and the displacement it is the angle between the force and the displacement now it's possible to find work as f s cosine of theta never forget this angle the angle is always between the force and displacement let's take massive body here let's take a box for example suppose a force is exerted on this box at an angle of theta from horizontal let's take horizontal line which is horizontal to the surface let's take the angle to be theta as this force is exerted 
on this massive body, it might be displaced from this point to some other location. Let it be here. At some other time, it can be here. Therefore, as it is displaced, it covers a distance of S. S. Therefore, what is the work done by this force in displacing this massive body a distance of S? That's how we are trying to determine work. So work is given us what? The force F and its component along horizontal is F cos theta. The horizontal component of this force is F cos theta times what? A displacement S. F cos theta times displacement S. This is how we determine mechanical work. Then what is a sign of work? What is the systematic international unit of work? Therefore, the systematic international unit of work or SI unit of work is the dimensional analysis of force and displacement. The SI unit of force is Newton. The SI unit of displacement is meter. Newton meter gives us joule. Joule in honor of James Prescott, joule. Therefore, the SI unit of work is joule. One joule is equivalent to that of one Newton meter. One Newton meter. So this is how we determine the SI unit of work. Now, it's also possible to represent force and displacement vectorially. How? Let's write force using dots product like this. Let's represent force vectorially. Let's take force as what? The force component along the x-axis, fx in the i, plus fy in a j, plus fz in a k. Let's take displacement s as sx in the i, plus sy in a j, plus sz along k where i, j, and k are unit vectors along x, y, and z. Now, work is the dot product of these two vectors. Therefore, vectorially, it can be represented as f, x in i, plus f, y in a j, plus f, z in a k, dotted with s, x in i, plus s, y along j plus sz along k. Sometimes it's also possible to use hat, hat on the unit vectors. Therefore, the dot product of these two vectors gives us only magnitude, or just we should have to multiply the coefficients fx with sx, not i with i, while we dotted i with i, result is 1 plus Fy, Sy, plus Fz, Sz. This is how we determine work. Then there are factors which affect work. Or in physics, for a work to be done, there should be three terms or three uh, criteria must be fulfilled. What are those three criteria? So the factors or the criteria The criteria must be fulfilled for a work to be done. To be done are one, there should be a non zero force exerted on a given object. The force must not be zero or there should be a non-zero force. Non-zero 
non-zero force, meaning the applied force must not be zero. If the force is zero, the result will also be zero. There is no mechanical work. The second criteria should be, there should be displacement whenever force is applied. Therefore, we can say this as non-zero displacement. S should not be zero. While we are making this, force must not be zero, non-zero. Displacement must not be zero. The third criteria, even though there are force and displacement, sometimes it's a, there are cases where there is no mechanical work. What is that? The force and the displacement, the force and the displacement must not be perpendicular to each other. So they must must not be perpendicular. Perpendicular. That means force must not be perpendicular to displacement. Students, let me ask you one question. Suppose a man carries a box and moves on a horizontal level road. Let's take it like this. For, sorry for my drawing. Let's say that this is a man, it carries a box and it travels horizontally. Now the man reaches here. Students, did this man perform mechanical work? Please try that. Well, the answer is this man cannot perform mechanical work. Why? Well, there are different forces acting on this object. The first thing is the force exerted on the man is due to the weight. Let's take it here that there is a weight of the object. This is the object. Mass times gravity gives us weight. Mass times gravity. While the man is exerting a force to resist this massive object, you have already learned in unit four about normal force. The normal force is the force against um, the weight, or it can be the net force on a contact surface. Therefore, the contact surface is the head of this man, might be. Therefore, the man will exert a force upward. That force is the normal force due to the man, which is equivalent to that of the weight of the object. Then, does this object moving along the force? No. But the object is moving to this side. This is a displacement S. Therefore, the angle between the force, the force exerted by the man, we can call it normal force, or we can call it uh, the downward force is gravity. Therefore, there is 90 degree between the two vector components. Therefore, when we calculate the work done, work is given us force times displacement times cosine of theta. When we substitute this, the force F, it can be mg, um, mass times gravity. The displacement might be there, but here, when we substitute the angle, it becomes cos 90. And we know that cos 90 is zero. Therefore, the mechanical work becomes zero. Students, did you get me? I hope you understand these concepts. For a work to be done, these three terms, these three criteria must be fulfilled. There should be an unzero force, there should be an unzero displacement, and at last, the force and the displacement must not be perpendicular. Now is a time of activity. Let me give you some examples and try to solve that.
Well, the solution would be, first, you should have to collect the given parameters or variables. The given variables are what? First, force is given, vector L form. Therefore, you should have to put it like this, 2 in the i minus 6 j newton. Whereas, the displacement is given, displacement is i plus 4j plus 2k, 2k. Now, we are asked to find the work done. What is the work done? Solution, what is the solution? Well, to solve this problem, you should have to put the mathematical expression of work. Work is expressed as force dotted with displacement S. Then force is given as what? 2 in I minus 6 in the J. This is the force. Dotted with what? Dotted with displacement I plus 4J plus 2K. 2K. What are the variables? What are the components of the force? Well, the component of the force are 2, which is 2, is in the x direction. We can call it fx is 2. In the y direction, we have force component along the y direction, which is minus 6, and the z component is 0. There is no z component here. Whereas here, the displacement component Sx is 1. Here we have only 1. Whereas the y component of the displacement is 4, and the z component of the displacement is 2. By the way, it's possible to use a component, a Coleman method and row method. You do have a such method in UNITO. Now, when we multiply this, 2 can be multiplied with 1i. Students, if you multiply i with j in unit 2, vector dot product, result becomes 0. i dotted with j is 0. i dotted with k is 0. Therefore, i dotted with i is 1. Therefore, it's possible to multiply only 2 with 1. Here we do have minus 6j. You should have to multiply minus 6j only by 4j. If you multiply minus 6j with i, it is the result is 0. With k, the result is 0. Therefore, we can multiply only i with i, j with j, k with k. Therefore, 2 multiplied with 1 plus minus 6 multiplied with 4 plus. Here we do have the zero component is zero, the z component is zero. We have only zero. Zero times two. When we multiply this, we can find it to be two minus twenty-four plus zero, and this gives us minus twenty-two joule. Work is minus twenty-two joule. Students, do you think that work can be negative? I hope you'll, you do understand this concept. Yes, work can be negative, work can be positive, as well as work might be there. What is the meaning of negative work? What is the meaning of negative work? Well, when work is negative, it means that the force and the displacement are in opposite direction. They are parallel but opposite in direction. When force and displacement, we have already mentioned that, force and displacement are perpendicular to one another, the force is zero. When the work is zero. When force and displacement are parallel, the work becomes positive. Therefore, work can be negative, work can be zero, or work can be positive. Therefore, now let's try to add some one more ex exercise or one more example.
Well, the solution of this answer would be, first we should have to collect all the given variables. What are the given variables? What are the given variables? First, what is given? Force is given. Force F is 100 Newton. The other thing is angle is given, which is 37 degree. And displacement as well is given, which is 4 meter. 4 meter. Then, uh, sometimes it's possible to sketch those problems. Okay? Easily, you can draw like this. For example, here you have the mass here. The force is acting at an angle of 37 degree from horizontal, like this. The force is 100 Newton. And it is displaced, displaced for meter. Now we are asked to find the work done by the applied force. Actually, there are different agents force exerted on this mass. There might be a frictional force, there might be a gravitational force, or some other forms of, uh, uh, forms of force or types of force. But here we are asked to find the work done by the applied force. Then we are asked to find the work done. Work done. Solution. Our solution becomes, we know that work can be represented as force times displacement times cosine of theta using magnitude, or it's also possible to use f dot s vectorially. Therefore, f times s times cosine of theta. f is 100 newton, the displacement is 4 meter, cosine of 37. Students, I hope you know cosine of 37. These are common angles, 37, 53, 90, 45, 30, and 60 are known. But it's possible to find on um, standard physics books or mathematics books. So cosine of 37 is equivalent to that of sine uh, 37, which is 0 0.8. 100 times 4 times 0 0.8. And this gives us 320 need meter. Newton meter is already known to be joule, 320 joule. That is the work done. That is the work done by the applied force. Now students, let's try to see the different forms or types of work. Work, uh, the different types of uh, force. There can be uh, constant force or there can be variable force. I hope in lower grade you have also learned that force can be categorized as contact force and non-contact force. But here, let's try to see only the mechanical forms, like frictional force, gravitational force, applied external force, work on a variable force like spring force. Therefore, work done by constant force and work done by variable force. We can categorize it into two. So students, next time we'll try to see about the work done by those applied forces. For today, it's all that I got. See you next time.